Welcome folks to a new example with uh, circuit analysis techniques using phasers. In this example we're going to have RL circuit and we're going to solve for this particular circuit using phasers. So let's look at the circuit here. Uh, this is a very simple circuit. In this particular circuit we have a voltage source. This voltage source is a sinusoidal voltage, is a cosine voltage and then that is connected to RL circuit. So we have a resistor in series with an inductor where the resistor value is 10 ohms and the inductor value is 0 0.5 henrys. So when we solve for the circuit, the first thing we have to do is we need to move to the phasor domain. So we have to move the circuit from the time domain to the phasor domain. Now the reason we use the phasor domain is basically to simplify the circuit analysis. In the time domain, this circuit is modeled as a differential equation and the solution to the differential equation is going to be tedious and we have to use the trig identities to solve for the response of the circuit. So in this circuit we are interested in the current I of T in the time domain and the voltage across the inductor we called it V of T. So we need to move the circuit into the phasor domain. So to do that, the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to look for the value omega. Omega is the angular frequency of this cosine signal. And the angular frequency is basically 10 radian per second. It is the coefficient next to the T value. So in this particular example, we have 10 radian per second, we're going to state that omega will equal to 10 radian per second. This is the coefficient that we are looking at, which equals to 10 radian per second. Then we're going to convert the voltage source from this time domain function into a phasor value. So the cosine voltage is converted to a phasor basically by taking the magnitude of the sine wave and the phase of the sine wave and convert it into a complex number, complex number in the polar form. So this basically becomes VI, we're going to call it VI, which is the input voltage, will equal to, you're going to have the magnitude, that is a 20, and then the phase, which is 30 degrees. Now keep in mind that this is a complex number, and this notation we call it the polar form. This is the polar form of a complex number. So we convert the voltage source to a uh, phasor. This is called phasor. And then we wanted to find the impedance of the inductor. We know that the impedance of the resistor is the same. If we have 10 ohms here, it's going to be 10 ohms. The impedance of the inductor is going to change based on the value of omega, right? based on the frequency. So we can say that ZL, that is the impedance of the inductor, will equal to J times omega times L. J here is the imaginary operator which equals to the square root of negative 1. So this is a complex number or imaginary value. And then we know omega will equal to 10 and L is 0 0.5. So this will be J times 10, that is omega, times 0 0.5 and that will equal to J5 and the unit is ohms so the impedance unit is ohms so J5 will be the impedance of the inductor J5 ohms now we're gonna draw the circuit in the phasor domain so this is the time domain circuit I recommend you to draw the circuit in the phasor domain uh, so to draw, when we draw the circuit in the time domain, that's what we have. It's the same circuit basically, but with, with a few changes. The voltage source becomes phasor. Phasor means complex value. That represents the magnitude of the cosine, that is 20, and the phase of the cosine, and that is 30 degrees. Then the resistor will have the same value. The impedance of the resistor doesn't change and the inductor will be replaced by its impedance. So the inductor becomes J5 ohms. The current changes from I of T to the phasor current. So we have I of T here in the time domain. The phasor circuit says that the current gonna be a phasor current, which means that the current can also be a complex number with magnitude and phase. 
and the voltage across the inductor we're going to call it V that becomes a phasor voltage which means that this voltage is going to have a magnitude and the phase as well uh, so as you can see the voltage here became the phasor voltage and the impedance of the inductor becomes and an imaginary value equals to J5 now to solve for the circuit the circuit is very simple we are gonna find the equivalent impedance seen by this voltage source the equivalent impedance is basically the sum of those two impedances the 10 ohm plus the J5 ohms because those two impedances are in series this resistor is in series with the inductor going to add the equivalent impedance of that so we can say that Z total will equal to the total equivalent impedance 10 plus J5 ohms now we can solve for the phasor current which is the current through the whole circuit that is going to be the phasor uh, uh, voltage divided by the total impedance of the circuit so this voltage VI which is the 20 and 30 degrees VI uh, that's going to be divided by the total impedance which is the 10 plus J5 so this will equal to 20 and 30 degrees divided by 10 plus J5 so here we are dealing with complex arithmetics so people who are going to solve for circuit problems they need to know how to handle complex arithmetics most modern calculators will do this simple arithmetics very easy but if you uh, wanted to know more insights of what's going on here is the best way to do this division is to convert the denominator into the boiler form so we can express this to be the 20 and 30 degrees divided by the 11.18 within an angle of 26.56 degrees so you convert this number to the boiler form so basically the magnitude going to be the square root of 10 squared plus 5 squared that's the magnitude and the phase going to be the tangent inverse of the imaginary part over the real part so we get the magnitude and the phase then you have a complex number over a complex number in the polar form so to get the result of that what you do is you divide the magnitudes so we're going to divide the 20 over the 11.18 and we are going to subtract the phases it's going to be the phase of the top minus the phase of the bottom or your calculator can do the arithmetic if you wanted to rely on your calculator either way will work but when you divide the 20 and 30 degrees divided by the 11.18 and with an angle of 26.56 the answer going to be 1.789 with a phase of 4.44 degrees now again as I said that divide the magnitudes and subtract the phases that's the basically that's the way the arithmetics work for complex numbers when we divide usually we divide in the polar forms or rely on your calculator to give you that answer either way will work but this is the current in the phasor domain so this is the phasor current so basically the current as a complex number we need to convert this complex current complex number current into a time domain current i of t so the conversion is very easy this is the magnitude of the cosine this is the phase of the cosine and we know that the omega doesn't change so omega going to be the 10 radian per second then we can say that i of t will equal to 1.789 that's the magnitude times the cosine 10 t 10 is omega which is 10 t plus whatever phase we have which is the 4.44 degrees that's in amps so we were able to solve for the current in the time domain now we want to solve for the voltage across the inductor so to solve for the voltage across the inductor you're going to multiply the phasor current times the impedance of the inductor that will give us the phasor voltage across the inductor then we can say that the phasor voltage across the inductor will equal to I that's the current times the impedance of the inductor 
So this will be 1.789 with an, an angle of 4.44 degrees times the impedance of the inductor, which is the J5. Uh, so when we do the multiplication, it is much easier to multiply the two numbers in the polar form. So I'm going to convert the J5 into its polar form. That's going to be 5 with 90 degrees. You can do that. Or you can click the numbers in your calculator if your calculator will do the conversion automatically for you. Either way would work. But if you do, if you couldn't do that, convert this number to its polar form. So what you're going to have is 1.789 within an angle of 44 of 4.44 degrees. That's basically the voltage in the polar form, and the J5 becomes 5 and 90 degrees. Now you're going to multiply two complex numbers in the polar form. The way it goes is you're going to multiply the amplitudes together and you're going to add the phases together. Multiply the magnitudes together and add the phases together. So what we have here is 8.944. That's the result of multiplying the magnitudes. And we're going to add the two phases. So that's going to be 94.44 degrees. And that is in volts. Then you can convert a phasor voltage into a time domain voltage so we're going to get the magnitude which is the 8.944 times the cosine of omega t omega is 10 so it's going to be the cosine of 10 t plus whatever phase we have which is the 94.44 degrees now what is important here is we need to know that the current lags the voltage in inductive circuits so this is inductive circuits that means you have a resistor in series with an inductor it's called inductive circuit an inductive circuit the current lags the voltage so the total uh, voltage to the circuit was 20 and 30 degrees so it was plus 30 degrees the current must be lagging in degrees so the phase of the current going to be less than the phase of the voltage. So when we did the analysis here, uh, the phase of the current was 4.44, which is much less than the 30 degrees. Then the current lags the voltage. Also, for the inductor only, if you're going to look at the inductor only, you can say that the current through the inductor going to lag the voltage by 90 degrees. So you can see that the phase of the voltage was 94.4 which is ahead of the current the current was 4.44 and that was by 90 degrees so basically the current gonna lag the voltage by 90 degrees this is only across the inductor so if you get the current through the inductor and the voltage across the inductor then the current gonna lag the voltage by 90 degrees so this is a very simple circuit so the first thing you want to do is convert the circuit from the time domain to the phasor domain. You need to know what's omega is, and then you get the magnitude and the phase of the uh, voltage source or all the sources in the circuit. Convert the resistors and the inductors into their impedances. Resistors don't change. The impedance of the inductor is going to be J omega L. And then you draw the circuit in the phasor domain, analyze it using complex numbers and then convert the circuit back into the time domain. I think most of the students are going to be uh, troubled with how to use the complex numbers and their arithmetics. So uh, students need to learn how to use their calculator. So I recommend the students to learn how to use complex numbers with their calculators and get up to speed with it as soon as they can.